And tonight we want to uh, talk about obedience versus sacrifice. And both of them uh, are required of the Lord, but the Lord requires obedience from us. And he says in uh, 1 Samuel 15, 22, remember when, when Saul went to battle and the prophet Samuel told him to, to destroy everything, uh, the animals, the king, the, the, the people. And, but he didn't do that. He brought back the king and he brought back the best of the animals and he lost the kingdom because of that disobedience. And so obedience is extremely important to, to our father. And we're going to explore that tonight. We're going to explore it. And what the Holy Spirit spoke to me was that obedience comes out of the fear of the Lord. Now that's not being afraid of the Lord, but that is being um, in reverence of him, respecting him, uh, doing his word, uh, loving each other. Uh, all of that is combined in fearing the Lord. We're going to talk more about that. But obedience is a supernatural um, element of our life. It is, comes from the heart. Obedience comes out of desire to please the Lord. I want to obey him because I love him. I want to keep his, his commandments because I love my heavenly father. And, and this is very critical in our walk with the Lord and our walk in the kingdom of God. And so this is why uh, this message is coming forth tonight. And sacrifice is in the natural realm. And in as we sacrifice, uh, remember Romans 12, uh, verse 1 and 2, it says that we are to, to uh, bring forth the sacrifice of our our bodies, uh, our our whole self, uh, we are to to sacrifice. But Saul in First um, Samuel fifteen, he disobeyed the Lord and did not completely get rid of his enemies. Now I want us to think about that. You know, if you have something that you haven't gotten rid of in your life that causes um, anxiety or causes pain in your body, uh, causes you to think about things uh, different than what the Lord would, would think about them. You know, have we gotten rid of everything? And so that's that's one thing I want you to consider. Well, one, one of the things that I think about on King Saul is that... Uh, he said he was going to take some of those animals that he had brought back and, and sacrifice. sacrifice them to the Lord. Now that sounds real good. Okay. Yeah. You're going to take some animals and you're going to sacrifice to the Lord. This is under the old covenant. This is not under the new covenant that we're under, but, but basically that idea seemed very good. But what Sherry is saying here is that obedience is better than sacrifice. Right. And, and so if you, if you're disobedient, and you can't cover it up uh, with a sacrifice to God. Yeah, that's that. In First Samuel fifteen twenty two, it says, "Has the Lord as great a delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord?" Oh, hallelujah! Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. So he doesn't say not to sacrifice, but he says it's better to obey the voice of the Lord and to heed than to, to have the fat of the ram. So to fear the Lord. Well, okay. You know, another verse, which I don't, um, 
don't know if you're going to cover or not, but is uh, Isaiah 119 it says, you be uh, willing if you obedient. be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Amen. In other words, there are rewards for being yes. obedient, not only obedient, but willing and obedient. Amen. So tell us your story, Sherry, about carrying out the garbage. Right. That was my job when I was growing up was I had to carry out the garbage and I didn't like the garbage. Not only did it smell bad, but I had to carry it to the back of our house, which we call the alley. And there were varmints out there. There were rats out there. There were raccoons and different kinds of, of animals that I didn't want to encounter. And so I was obedient, but I wasn't willing. No, I was willing. No, I was obedient. Yeah, 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 right. I was obedient, but I wasn't willing to do willing it. To do it. Uh, yeah, they, had to, they had to force you to do it. They had to force me to do it. <laughs> so I was going to be grounded if I did not carry out the garbage. But and the, so, But the reward comes with being willing. Willing and, and obedient. Yes. That's exactly right. That's exactly <laughs> right. Now, I began to meditate on this message and... The fear of the Lord just kept coming up in my spirit, man. You know, what does it really mean to fear the Lord? Somebody tell us your definition of the fear of the Lord. What is your definition of it? Just unmute yourself and let us hear from you. Okay, Wendy? To honor him. To honor yeah. him. That's yeah. beautiful. Amen. <clears throat> That's exactly right. That's very much involved with uh, the fearing the Lord. Somebody else. And trust. And yeah. and trusting in the Lord. Yes. Absolutely. You know, I have a fear of the Lord. I, I don't want to do something that would cause him to be angry at me. I, I don't want to go and, mm -hmm. against what the Lord wants. And, and I have a fear of the Lord in that regard. And, and so that keeps me um, moving in what I believe is the right direction for me uh, because I do fear the Lord. And I'm not just, I'm not willing to go and do evil uh, out of the fact that I do fear him and uh, I'm concerned about what he thinks about me and I want to please him. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it says in Deuteronomy 10, 12, and now Israel, and that we're, we're spiritual Israel. So this is talking to us. What does the Lord, your God require of you, but to fear the Lord, your God. Mm hmm to walk in all of his ways and to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul. And that's your emotions, your feelings, your attitude, your thinking. Are you loving the Lord? Are you loving the Lord? And then in Deuteronomy 13, 14, it says, then you shall inquire, search out and ask diligently. And if it is indeed true and certain that such an abomination was committed among you, then you will let the Lord handle that situation. And so we want to, we want to bring that fear, fear of the Lord. But there, there are many benefits to fearing the Lord. And in Psalms 34, there are three verses that, that give us some rewards, some benefits, some blessings if we fear the Lord, if we honor him, like Wendy said, if we trust him, if we uh, don't do anything that displeases him. In, in Psalms 34, 7 says, the angel of the Lord encamps around about those who fear him and delivers them. 
Hallelujah. That is a big benefit. Yes, it is. And see, the fear of the Lord is the is where obedience grows out of. It is the it is the root system uh, that obedience will rise up and come forth in you when you fear the Lord. You want to please him. You want to uh, him to uh, be happy with you and joyful with you. Okay, now stay in the same psalm and go to verse 9. This is... Did we do 7? We oh, did. Yeah, nine, did no, I just no, did this. Okay. okay. In, in verse 9, it says, Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. Ooh, hallelujah. That means that he's going to provide everything that you need. If yeah. you need finances, if you need hope, if you need peace, if you need healing, whatever you need, it says that you will have no want. No lack. No lack. Hallelujah. This is the same word that is in Psalms 23 that says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Now that's out of fearing the Lord and being obedient to him. Then Psalms 34, 11. You know, you can't call him Lord if you don't obey him. Yes. That's Amen. what makes him Lord. We're willing to obey him. Mm, that's good. That's very good. Psalms 34, verse 11. It says, come, children, listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. So this tells me that we can learn uh, joy. That was part of Joy's prayer. Number one, I, I, I just, I'm just going to pick out a few major points of her prayer that started this session tonight. And one was that we would encounter him. I love that. I want to encounter yes. him. And I know that yes. you want to yes. encounter him. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, but she also, she also prayed that we would stay teachable. That we would, it says that we are to have a meek and humble spirit. That means not not shy, not timid. We're not to have a spirit of timidity, but we are to be teachable. I'm still learning. Brother Fred is still learning. All of us are still learning. A child can teach us. An elderly person can teach us. And so we need to, to stay teachable. And that's one of the benefits of fearing the Lord that he's going to keep us in that position. Okay, now there are three people I want to talk about that they were so obedient to the Lord that it is amazing to me when I read about these three people. One is Noah, one is Abraham, and of course, one is Jesus. And I think about, and I and I studied and I studied and I thought, Lord, you know, what is it that all three of these, out of their obedience, is there something that they had in common? Is there something that was there that was running through the through the whole? their whole spirit and soul and mind and body and, and running through their behavior. And, and what was it, Lord? You know, and it says here, Genesis 6, 8, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now, let's just stop for a moment and talk about grace. Because many people say, well, it's unmerited favor of the Lord. Yes, it is. That's very true. But it's also the operational power of God. That's why it's going to help you get through a crisis situation. I believe that with George and Joy, with their situation three years ago, they needed the grace of God to be able to stand, to be able to overcome, to be able to speak uh, to their issue. And, and so 
We all need that grace. We all need it. And it said that Noah had found grace in the sight of God, which tells me that God gave him grace to build that ark when people were laughing at him and mocking him and there had never been a drop of rain on the earth and he's saying that a flood is coming. Come and get into the ark. The flood is coming. And that's the way it is in the spiritual realm today. People that, that are not listening. They're not listening to us say, Jesus is coming. He's coming back. Are you ready? You need to come into the kingdom of God. You need to come into Jesus. But they keep on building and marrying and, and doing their own things. Just like in the days of Noah. That's what the New Testament says. That's the way it's going to be when Jesus, when the flood comes. And it's the flood of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You know what I think about? Noah, he, it said he found a favor in the eyes of the Lord and received grace. And uh, favor and grace are closely related there. And uh, uh, but we know that he resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So Amen. Noah, Amen. Noah was humble. But but what did Noah do? He worked for decades on building the ark. Yes, on, for decades. And that is, that's amazing. That's what, that's what humility is that, that, uh, you're willing to do what God said and, uh, just keep doing what God is telling Amen. you to do. Amen. And that's where you get the grace when you are obedient and you just humble yourself and you're going to do what God is telling you to do. He Amen. gives you the grace Hallelujah. because you're humble. Uh, Thank if you, we Jesus. Are, are second guessing what our assignment is and uh and we're double-minded we're not going to get what we need from god that's exactly right that's exactly right and it says in genesis 6 14 god told noah go and make me an ark out of gopher wood make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside he did all of that he was obedient right down to the last piece of lumber that he put into the ark, Noah was obedient. But then let's read in 618. And when I read Genesis 618, I knew what these three people had in common. It says here, but I will establish my covenant with you and you shall go into the ark, you, your sons, your wife and your son's wives with you. What do you get out of that scripture right there? What did Noah get from being obedient with to the father? Somebody tell me. What did he get? I think he, he got blessings for his family. Yes. He got, got blessings, blessings for his family. family. Yes, he uh, did. The whole household was saved. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 And we just have, um, uh, is her name Faye? She has just joined us. So, so, so we welcome you. Yes, we welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. But he says, I will establish my covenant with you. This is what all three of these people had with the father because they were obedient. They had a covenant with him oh hallelujah and whatever do you know what a covenant is it's an agreement uh let's say i have an, a covenant with george okay i have an agreement with george and whatever george has he's going to give to me and whatever i have i'm going to give to george all right look at george and joy they have a marriage covenant and whatever george has belongs to joy and whatever joy has belongs to George. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to get hold of that because our Heavenly Father has all of the silver and all of the gold and all of the cattle on a thousand hills. 
they belong to him. So when we cut covenant by accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, then we have a covenant with him. And out of obedience, we have a covenant with him. And I thought, Lord, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Whatever you have, I have. And whatever I have is yours. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let's look at Abraham. And Abraham, I love Abraham. He's the father of our faith. But I, I just think about his life. And I think about people who are waiting for their blessing. They're waiting for what God has promised them. This man waited 25 years for that son. And he didn't give up. He didn't throw in the towel. He didn't say, well, God's never going to do it. And I've had people to come to me and say, well, you know, I guess God's not going to uh, do anything. It's yeah. been so long. You know, they, they know they have a promise that God has promised them. Uh, but they're not willing to wait like Abraham. Amen. Amen. Many people. But see, Abraham had a covenant with God, with his heavenly father. He had a covenant. He was a friend of God. And it says in Genesis 12, 1 through 4, Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house. And I think of all of you uh, that possibly have left loved ones in, in, in different places. It says here, from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation. Now here, Brother Fred talked about promise. And so this is a promise that, that the father is giving Abraham. He says, I will bless you. I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. Not only will I'm, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to bless you, new song, but you're going to be a blessing. Hallelujah. Why? Why is that? It's because we are to be conduits. We are to be vessels that the blessings flow in and the blessings flow out. Hallelujah. And that, that's in every category. That's, that's in joy and love and finances and healing whatever deliverance whatever it might be it comes in and it flows out and he says i'm gonna you're going to be a blessing and you're going to be a I blessing bless you i will bless you and you will be a blessing right. oh and i will listen to this this is not the end of the promise here and i will curse him who curses you mm. And in all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him. And his nephew Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he left. So it's never too late to hear the voice of the Lord. It's never too late to obey what he's telling you to do. That's right. That's Hallelujah. That's Hallelujah. Genesis 17, 7. I will establish my covenant, Woo! hallelujah, between me and you and your descendants. Are we descendants of Abraham? Yes. Hallelujah. It says here. If you be Christ, then are you Abraham's, Abraham's seed. seed and heirs. Oh, hallelujah. 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 So that covenant is there, people. I'm telling you that there is power in being obedient. Ooh, in Jesus' name, it says, and I will make a, you an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to be God to your descendants. And then in Genesis 22, there was a time when the Heavenly Father spoke to Abraham. And this was after Isaac was born. He was a young man. And he says to Abraham in 22, Genesis 22, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, mm, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him as a burnt 
offering. Oh. In this in this passage right here, we not only see obedience, but we see sacrifice. Now I want you to, to listen to this. I want there I want to make a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey. This to me is amazing right here. This to me is amazing. And why was Abraham able to be obedient? Number one, he had grace. He had God's grace upon him. He had the blessings upon him. But he also had humility. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting every care over on him. I believe that Abraham said, I'm going to be obedient to the Lord. And if Isaac dies, God has the power to raise him up again. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey, took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son. And they split the wood and made it ready for the burnt offering. And they arose and went to the place of which God had told him. But I didn't, I don't have this written down on my paper right here, but I remember what Abraham said to those servants. He says, y'all stay here, y'all. You stay here at the foot of the mountain and Isaac and I are going to go up there on top of the mountain and we, plural, will be back. We're coming back. Not just, and I will be back, but we will be back. So you see where his faith was? You see, there's a lot of things wrapped up in this message tonight. Obedience, sacrifice, faith, trust. Mm, 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 mm. And then faithful Abraham. Hebrews 11, 8 says, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go to a place that he didn't even know where he was going. And he went out not knowing where he was going. But also we can add to that, he took his son to the mountaintop to sacrifice him. To sacrifice him. But we know what happened at the end of the story. God provided. Remember what, what is a, what's part of the covenant is that we will not want for anything. We will not want for a sacrifice. We will not want uh, for the lamb in the bush or the, the ram in the bush. We will not want for anything. There will be no lack. There will be no lack if we have a covenant with the Lord. Or whatever we need, he will supply. That's exactly right. Now let's look at Jesus. I love to look at Jesus. Look into Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Do you think that he had a covenant with the Heavenly Father? I believe that he did. And in Mark 14, 36, he says, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Oh. Hallelujah. Now this is, this is a picture of obedience. It's also a picture of sacrifice. Jesus was the perfect sacrifice for all of us. And we thank him today for that in the name of Jesus. Philippians 2, 8 says, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Now, where is the point that I want to bring forth tonight? 
is that when we die, that is the ultimate act of obedience and the ultimate act of sacrifice is when we die so that he can live through us. And that is when we become who he is. We become his eyes. We become his mouth. We become his ears. We become his hands. We become his feet. We become his body. As he is, so are we on the earth. That's when you've died. That's when you've died. Sherry can no longer live and do the ultimate, be ultimate in obedience and sacrifice. Now. Now that verse you just quoted, Sherry, is very interesting because it says as he is. It doesn't say as he was. That's right. Or how is he? Well, he is the king of kings. Yes. He's seated in the heavenly places in heavenly places at the right hand of the father and as he is so are we that's right so he's in our position of rulership amen and he has made us uh kings and priests and so we amen. are in uh the same position as he is now yes so are we now amen and he is a warrior king hallelujah He's coming back on that white horse. I love that scripture in Revelation where he's coming back with his warriors, his army. Uh, God's got an army marching through the land. Deliverance is their song. There's healing in their hands. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. And in this army, I've got a part. Hallelujah. And so do you. And so do you. What does your obedience bring you into? It brings you into freedom. It brings you into freedom. And in, in Galatians 5, 1, it says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty or in the freedom by which Christ has made you free. And do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Is there any bondage that you're carrying around? Is there any bondage that the enemy has tried to put upon you? Uh, and he does that through your thought life. He does it through other people. He does it through uh, watching uh, things that you're not supposed to watch. Uh, he's, uh, you know, I have an individual that the, the minute they think that they have something in their bodies, they go to the internet and they start researching all about it. They know every little detail of this sickness or disease. That's not what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be trusting the Lord. We have a covenant with him. He's going to keep us healthy. He's going to keep us uh, from our enemies. He says anybody that, that curses us, he's going to curse. Anyone who comes against us, uh, you new song comes against the Lord. They come against the Lord. Any words that are spoken of you, any actions, any behavior that has come to hurt you or injure you. And in the name of Jesus, and there's two others uh, on this session tonight. When the enemy comes to hurt you and harm you, it says that you have a covenant with the Father, and he is going to destroy your enemies. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. He's come to destroy the works of the devil. And I'm telling you, depression is of the devil. Sickness and disease is of the devil. Wrong thinking is of the devil. I'm telling you, lack and poverty are of the devil. And you've got a father who you've cut covenant with that will get rid of all that garbage. Praise God. I want him to get rid of some things. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So, but we have to stand in that. We have to. And how do we stand? We stand in grace. It says that we stand by the grace of God. Doesn't it say that? That we're saved by the grace of God and we stand by the grace of God. Amen. 
That's exactly what it says. Now, I want you to think about this. What does obedience bring to us as a whole? We've got a covenant with the Heavenly Father, the God of all creation. We have a covenant with Him. We have made an agreement with Him. Hallelujah. That's why I say that obedience is a supernatural. It's supernatural. It's where you walk in the supernatural. Oh, hallelujah. That's what it says in Galatians 5, 16, that we're to walk in the spirit and not, and we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. See, the lust of the flesh is, well, I'm going to, I'm going to think about what's going on in my body. I'm going to think about uh, how I'm going to pay my bills. I'm going to think about uh, those nasty things that, you know, that my uh, relatives said about me. You know, I, those are those are lust of the flesh. Do you see that? So it's not just pornography. It's not just you know going into to nightclubs and and strip joints. You know, you know, it's not it's not all that. It's 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 other things. Lust of the flesh. Now I want to give you three, and I'm I'm going to bring this to a close tonight obedience will bring you three wonderful things it will bring you the power to overcome i don't know about you but there's been plenty of times in my life that i've had to ask the lord i need your power i need your power to overcome we need his power and the power of the Holy Spirit will help us to be more than conquerors. And then the second thing that obedience will bring you is position. Remember where he's put us? He set us in heavenly places in, in him. In him we live and move and have our being. That's our position, people. Your position is not down here on the earth. Your position is heavenly. Your position is in the heavenly realm. Oh, hallelujah. And in the heavenly realm, all things are possible. All things are possible. And that position also puts you into righteousness. That's the position that you're in because of your obedience to the Heavenly Father. And then the last thing is authority. He brings you the authority to speak. See, authority speaks. 